It's about following the science, and it's about trusting our fellow scientists and trusting our data. We said, this is doable in this chemical space now, and that was really exciting. I felt very fortunate and privileged to be a part of that moment. It felt a huge opportunity, but a huge accountability to use the deep capabilities that we'd built up in small molecule drug design in Pfizer and to make a difference. It was January of 2020 and we had been watching the disease and seeing that it was starting to get more serious and had been reported in December. We began to think of, as well as our work on a vaccine, what could we do to bring forward a therapeutic, knowing that for most viral diseases you need both vaccines and therapeutics to really change the trajectory of the disease. Everyone realized the enormity of the task at hand, and it was essentially all hands on deck that we were able to leverage the resources of this large organization. The design of the molecule really reached upon our existing infrastructure within medicine's design, where the scientists were able to use artificial intelligence and digital technologies to really model what the perfect molecule needed to look like. All the activities leading up to phase one was being done in a parallel, and we were adapting as the data was emerging. We were given the resource to do all the studies we needed to do, so we didn't have to decide between what was a priority at the time and what would be a priority next. If we saw something that looked attractive, we might take a risk and make a lot of it quickly because that allows us to run multiple tests at the same time and get to sort of the end question faster. There was no barrier to the fact that, you know, we were in the labs and our designers were working at home and our biologists were in a different state. And we never felt any of that at the time because of the way that we communicated so constantly. We really maximized adaptive designs given the pandemic, at the same time de-risking the program and accelerating for transformational success. There was no doubt we were able to do what we could do due to actually decades of research that have built up many of the scientific disciplines, both in and outside of Pfizer. I think the, the thing where it really became real for me was when we got the first API, it was in the filter dryer, got this lovely white drying solid. We offload that into bags and you can hold the bag up and say, I've, I've done it, I've got it. One thing that really indelibly sticks in my mind that was a key breakthrough moment was when we first found out about the interim analysis results for the phase two, three study. Whenever we heard that the news was to stop for overwhelming efficacy, it was um, you know, a tremendous feeling of, you know, that we delivered this medicine for patients. We have certainly learned things through our work on the oral therapeutic for COVID-19 that we are already implementing across our portfolio. I think there's a real learning here that people who are passionate about what they do and about the disease being targeted will really run through walls and you know move mountains if they can to make it happen. Were we surprised? Yes, I think we were surprised how quickly we could do it. Was I surprised? that people really pulled together. No, I'm not. It's an incredible opportunity that we took to make a difference, but it's also just fundamentally what science can do.